Good evening and welcome to Front Page by AIM Network, India's video first AI and tech newsroom. Tonight, we are not talking about another chatbot update. We are actually talking about who controls the electricity grid of AI. NVIDIA sells the generators. Google now wants to build the entire grid and flood it with over 5 million TPUs by 2027. If that happens, the GPU shortage era ends and the real war begins. Who can sell compute cheapest at gigawatt scale? Make sure to like, share and subscribe because this is the next chapter of a story we've been tracing for months on end. Analysts tracking Google's custom silicon say, by 2027, Google will have more than 5 million TPUs deployed across Google Cloud, training clusters, inference farms, and customer workloads. This surge is already reshaping the industry. Anthropic has committed up to 1 million TPUs and more than 1 gigawatt of capacity for Claude. The New Deal lets Anthropic buy TPU V7 chips directly, not just rent them. Meaning, Google is now a chip supplier, not just a cloud provider. Google is moving from TPUs for Google, TPUs as a global AI utility. Recent analysis shows a very stunning shift, which is Google's TPU V6E slash V7 stack delivers 20 to 50% lower total cost per useful FLOP for large buyers. Often, matching NVIDIA's raw performance but beating them on economics. The pricing tells the story. TPU V6e, which is $2.7 per chip hour. NVIDIA B200 class, $5 to $6 per GPU hour. And once you measure tokens per second and real FLOP utilization, TPUs often offer significantly better performance per dollar at scale. No drama, no hype, just cheaper AI. This is why hyperscalers and labs are finally doing the math and why NVIDIA has started sweating publicly. For years, Jensen Huang ignored competitors. But when reports emerged that Meta was exploring TPUs, NVIDIA did something very uncharacteristic. It issued a public defensive statement attacking TPUs as, well, inflexible ASICs. The translation? NVIDIA GPUs are cash. Spend them anywhere. Google's TPUs are gift cards. Valuable, but, well, specialized. It's a, clever, it's a very clever argument. But the very fact that NVIDIA felt the need to make this particular argument proves something very fundamental, which is, for the first time in the generative AI era, NVIDIA sees a very real threat. What's driving that fear? Let's find out. Google's Ironwood pod scales smoothly to 9 to 1, 6 TPUs on one fabric. Vertical integration makes TPUs 30 to 50% cheaper for Google to operate. Customers like Meta and Anthropic want a second supplier. And CUDA lock-in is finally cracking as more labs optimize for JAX and PyTorch XLA. Just when the industry looked like a two-horse race between Google and NVIDIA, AWS entered the battlefield at reInvent with Trainium 3 and the upcoming Trainium 4. Amazon delivered a message very loud and clear, and here is that message. We don't want the NVIDIA tax either. The key updates, Trainium 3, which is the 3 nanometer, is 2.5 P-flops, FP8 big memory slash bandwidth upgrades, 40% lower energy burn. Trainium 4, interoperability with NVIDIA GPUs via NVLink, fusion heavy inference, optimization, deep commitment to AI agents and multimodal workloads. AWS is building a hybrid compute model, which is GPUs plus custom silicon at scale without 
dependence on a single vendor. The hyperscaler chip war has actually officially begun. Google's entire 5M TPU push sits on top of its newest chip, which is the TPU V7 Ironwood, a single chip which has this 4614 FP8 TFLOPS 192 GB HBM 3E, which is 7.3 terabytes per second memory bandwidth. A single pod is 9216 chips, 42.5 exaflops FP8, 1.77 PB HBM 3E 9.6 terabytes per second optical interconnect. This is Google's inference engine for the next decade, powering Gemini, YouTube, Search, Ads, Workspace, and now other people's models. The three reasons, which are of course all existential, and here they are, end dependence on NVIDIA. Google wants to train and serve all of its models, Gemini, Search, Ads, YouTube, without fighting for GPUs. 5M TPUs gives Google autonomy, predictable supply and enough surplus to sell compute and chips to the rest of the industry. Analysts estimate that up to about 90% of AI spend will shift to inference over the next decade. In inference, the winner isn't the fastest chip. It's actually the cheapest reliable token at planetary scale. 5M TPUs lets Google slash inference pricing, push competitors into low margin territory, normalize TPUs as the economic baseline for AI compute, become a commodity. Margin collapse. The Nvidia tax shrinks. Reverse Nvidia's business model and this is what you get. Nvidia sells premium GPU servers with very high margins. Google's model is design chip to Broadcom packages it to TSMC fabs it to Google integrates racks plus networking, lower internal cost, ability to sell TPUs directly for customer data centers. So for the first time in a decade, labs can choose between Nvidia's merchant GPU stack Google's low margin hyperscale TPU, utility making it a completely different economic world. TPUs require more compiler and kernel work than GPUs. CUDA remains the default ecosystem. Google must support TPUs outside its cloud. A new muscle enterprises will fear swapping one lock-in, which is CUDA, for another, which is Google. This is a long war of economics, supply chain, and developer mindshare. And now, as always, here is the front page take. Yesterday's battle was the fastest chip. Today's battle, cheapest compute. Tomorrow's battle, who controls the AI infrastructure layer? NVIDIA still sells the most coveted generators, but Google is racing to build the electric grid. And if it really ships 5 million plus TPUs by 2027, AI compute stops being a luxury and becomes a global utility, cheaper everywhere and fiercely competitive. So is this the beginning of the end for the Nvidia tax or the start of a new AI silicon bubble? Please do let us know in the comments below.